So you want to know how to program a game. So let's look at the process involved with doing that. There are several things that you want to keep in mind and you want to make sure that you make a successful product. One of the best ways to do this is to have some clear thoughts in mind on how to get where you want to go. So where do you start? Well, we look at two concepts on where do you start. Brainstorming ideas and creating inspirational art. By doing these two things, we can really focus what it is that you want to make and ensure that you can actually create that game that you want to make. Don't bite off too much, but do enough that you're going to be interested in what you want to do. So, when you're brainstorming, here's some ideas about how you might want to do that. Get out paper. You know, many people think, oh, hey, I'm just going to start hacking away at a game. But the reality is, if you just start programming and you don't think about what it is you want to do, you wind up creating something that's just a big, ugly mess. You're not sure where to go with it. So you really should step back, take some time, think about it, and try to focus on what is it the end product you want to create. Now, what I recommend is that you write ideas down for games that you would like to make. And I recommend that you create a lot of different ideas. So that way you can choose from a pool of them. But if you really have your heart set on doing something, maybe you should just go with that. I highly recommend that you sketch your ideas and have a picture in your, that you have a picture for you in your head. Uh, draw screenshots. You know, what, what do you want the game to look like while it's in play? Uh, what happens in interactions? What is a, a critical scene that you want to happen in your game? Uh, this will really help drive you as you're trying to write the code so that you can match what's in your head with what you're trying to program. And it's going to make it a lot easier for you to come up with the, the code that you're going to need to put in to make that idea happen. And you should write down how you think the game should work. Like, what kind of controls do you want? Uh, if I jump, what should that look like? Uh, or if I have a puzzle game, if, if I complete part of the puzzle, what happens with the rest of the puzzle? Uh, maybe what kind of effects you should expect to see? What kind of feedback should the player have? And it might not even be a bad idea to write a complete user manual for your game. Now you might think, well I haven't even made a game yet, how can I make a user manual for it? Well you're thinking about how you want that game to be played. And one of the cool things is, if you actually went that extra step to make that user manual, uh, I've done this myself in the past, and one of the things I discovered was by having that user manual, I was actually able to make the game exactly the way I wanted it to look. Because I had the user manual to look at, it says, oh hey, the game needs this. So I went and put it in the game. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't go and change that user manual, because as you're programming, you might find, oh hey, it's kind of stupid to do this thing. I don't know why I'm doing that. Go back, remove it, edit it, uh, and then uh, move forward with your game. Now, the, the, the next thing that you can do is to create that lore, and I create uh, inspirational artwork, graphics, sound files, you know, if you're, if you're really good at, at making uh, loops or, or music files, you know, this is a great place to start, or even sound effects. If you have a really neat sound effect, you're like, man, that would be really great to put a game around. It's a great place to start. Or dialogue scripts, you know, uh, if you have NPC interactions, if you have a, a story that you'd like to put, interactive fiction. Uh, that's a great place to start. Or storyboards, like you, you know, hey, I want a game that starts here, goes here, goes here, and you know, here's the history of everything that we behind this, because these can really help you and inspire you, uh, and they will also help you focus. Because many times, if you create this pieces of artwork, you can go back to it and say, well, you know, when I drew this character that I wanted to put in this role playing game, I noticed that I used a lot of uh, these features, and that's something that would really happen in this world. Or maybe you have a music file that uses a lot of one type of instrument and maybe that instrument really inspires you to say is that oh this is what this culture is like they they have this really sense to them based on on the the, the artwork that you created in your lore uh, and this is a great way to keep your focus especially when you're looking at adding features to your game uh, so once you have it in a more complete mode you might think to yourself well how can I make this a little bit better very often you have to ask your the, the people playtesting your game uh, for that ideas but very often you can create this lore and that will be your backdrop to say oh I want to add more stuff to it that's going to be your bible on how you can add more things to your to your final product so once you've prepared all that, once you have an idea of what you want to create, and I actually recommend several ideas because uh, one of the things I find is that uh, game designers, game developers, when they're first getting started, will try to bite off way more they can chew. They're like, yeah, I'm going to make Command and Conquer, or I'm going to make Call of Duty my very first time out the gate. Uh, and while it's possible, 
I think, in my experience, most people who try to do that lose interest so quickly because they, they get mired in things that are just too difficult for them to do. So how can we prevent this from happening? Okay, well the first thing is to be prepared. And then once you have your pre preparation in place, just do it. Now you might say to yourself, why don't I just start coding? Well, again, like with the ideas to come up with those brainstorming ideas, is that you want to kind of be ready and, and in a right mind space to say, do I know what I need to do to do this? So here's what I, I uh, my, my plan and what, what I think would be a good way to go about this. First, choose the language uh, that you want to program your game in and make sure you have the documentation handy for that. Now, I personally prefer programming in Python and Java and they both have excellent online documentation. I use the Pygame documentation uh, almost all the time when I'm writing my games. Even though I'm, I'm getting much more familiar with that programming language, I still go back and look at the documentation because sometimes I find that nugget that I'm just like, whoa, I didn't know that. Uh, but also, you know, when I'm looking at my harder problems, it helps me solve those problems because you can look for what you need to do. And I'm going to do a complete video on that, on how you can use documentation more effectively. Know which libraries you're going to need for your game. Now, of course, you're not going to know them all because you might come up with this great idea in the middle of developing your game like, oh, it'd be really cool if we could do this. And you wind up needing maybe a, a, a networking library or maybe a 3D library or maybe you have a, an, uh, some sort of audio library that does something fancy. Uh, so you might not know all of your libraries in advance, but you should know at least the most basic ones. Uh, if you have some background in programming, you probably already know which ones you want. Identify what the separate tasks for the game are going to be and categorize them as easy or hard. So let's take, for example, the game Pong. You have basically two paddles that hit a ball and knock them back and forth, essentially like uh, an air hockey game or, or ping pong. And so what are the different things that we have to do here? Well, I have to have two paddles that are independently controlled by a player. There's a ball that has to move on its own and has to resolve collisions with the walls in the environment and the player's paddles. If the ball exits the screen, then you need to update the score and re relocate the ball and determine if the game is over. Uh, and that's pretty much the, oh, and maybe you want to show a score. So these are the concepts or the ideas that you need to put into that game to make it. Uh, or, and just to give one more example to help solidify this, let's say I want to make the game uh, Space Invaders. So picture Space Invaders in your head. Okay, we have aliens and they move across the screen and they're going to come down. I have my little player ship at the bottom. I can shoot missiles up at the aliens. The aliens can shoot missiles down at me. And if you want a, a true conversion to the original uh, Atari Space Invaders game, uh, you would have the shields in between the player and the enemies. So those are the, the constructs you would need. And you want to ask yourself, how would I put those, or how, what are they? Do I know how to implement that? And would that be easy for me to do or hard for me to do? And if you identify that right now instead of just jumping in and coding, it will help you think about that problem. And one of the things you'll notice is that your game will actually be easier to write. It'll go a lot faster. And again, I'm going to do another video on this to, to demonstrate it. It's very powerful and I highly recommend that you do it. Now, once you have all that preparation in place, then start programming. Just dig in and do it. Okay? Do, do it in, in steps, though. Start with the easiest things. Uh, you know, get a window on the screen. That's the very first thing you want to do. It's the easy thing to do. Uh, and then once you have a window on the screen, maybe you can start playing your music file, or maybe you want to get uh, a graphic on the screen. Maybe you have a player in your game, you want to put that player on the screen, or you have a ship, put the ship on the screen, or you have an enemy that you want to track, put the enemy on the screen. Make a game like Duck Hunt, put your duck out there. Uh, maybe you show the, the, the target reticule for the, the gun for the Duck Hunt game. Uh, get that on, the, just do one thing. Do the easiest things, the things that you know how to do. Do those first, because you're going to build up a lot more confidence as you see your game being built, and you say, oh, hey, it's really coming together. I can see it happening. Don't start with the hard stuff. You start with the hard things, and you're just going to wind up spinning your wheels. Uh, and I'm going to have a very specific discussion in a much later video on uh, 3D game design, on how you can design a 3D game, even if you don't know how to do 3D right now, uh, and still keep focus on it. I do recommend that you use source control. 
Uh, source control is basically a way for you to keep track of your source code. Uh, GitHub is an example of this and is a great tool. Now if you don't want to use a commercial uh, source control, uh, one thing I did when I was first writing a program is just make a copy of your, your program. Anytime that you get uh, something cool working in your game, you know, compile it, run it, make sure it works, and then back out the folder, copy the folder, paste it, and give it a revision number. So, like, maybe I'm making Space Invaders, now Space Invaders version 1, Space Invaders version 2. That way, if you mess something up really bad, you don't have to worry about, oh my god, I broke all this code and I don't know how I'm going to get back. That's going to be a great way to, to protect yourself on that. Uh, and also, if you do something really cool, let's say you have this glitch, but the glitch turns out to be so amazing, maybe it's not right for this game, but it's an idea for a future game. Well, you have that copy of that glitch, then you can go back and look at. Save and test often. I can't say this enough. Don't try to write big blocks of code right away. Uh, that It's just going to uh, frustrate you, and you wind up uh, not getting your project done. And above all, don't be afraid to break your game. And like I said, if you're using source control, you can go back and undo anything you do. But try things. If you get stuck on something, just try try something to get it worked out. If you can't figure it out, look up the documentation. If the documentation doesn't help you, uh, get online and, and just start Googling it. Uh, get on Stack Overflow, ask questions. You know, just... Uh, but I will, and at point three here shows don't spend too much time on the hard stuff. If you have th six things that you have marked out that you want to do in your game, and you've only done three of them, and you're stuck on the fourth one, and you're just like, if you spent four hours on it, just stop, move on to to another piece, or you know, take a break, uh, leave it for a day or so, come back to it. There's no point in 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 burning yourself out and getting frustrated. You know, just take your time, have fun with it. And, you know, just have an amazing time. Uh, Perging Games is, is, is such a rewarding experience. Um, you know, just have fun with it. Go out there, create something, have fun.